So in these Bumbetka caves near Bhopal, India, are some of the um, earliest cave paintings that have ever been found. And it's an, actually a really great place to talk about information systems. Information systems are ways we have, technologies we have, for recording and accessing information. And cave paintings are, as far as I can tell, the earliest way that human beings ever came along to came came up with to do that. So, what would what what's a cave painting about? Someone comes along and says, you know, I have an idea. I want to I want to show it to other people. I want to capture it for other people to see. So they carve it into a wall, or they paste it with with ochre or some kind of paint onto the side of the the cave wall. Other people come along later and they get something from it. They get entertainment from it. They get some kind of education from it. Maybe it's a history of the people who live there. Whatever it is they get from it. So it's an information system using a much earlier technology than the technologies we're going to talk about in this class. In this class, we're going to talk about modern information systems. And modern information systems really are a combination of hardware, software, networks, all working together to give you, to allow you to manage data and give you some sort of features. So let me talk about those two things in turn. First of all, features. Features are abilities. They, it's your ability to do something. Sometimes the something that you have the ability to do using an information system is in the physical world. Like, for example, I can use software to turn my camera on and off. Something actually happened in the physical world. I changed the state of the camera, or I can turn my car on, or I can, uh, I can monitor the status of my refrigerator and turn up the temperature on my refrigerator, for example. That's actions in the real world, abilities that you have to change something in the real world. But the vast, vast, vast amount of abilities that information systems give you are virtual abilities, the ability to change the state of information. They're cyber abilities. They're things that happen not in the real world. When I say that you're a friend with somebody else, that doesn't actually have have any impact in the real world directly, what it does is it changes the information that Facebook keeps in some database and it allows the, the database to then tell you that this person is a friend. Now you might take some physical actions based on that, but the ability, the ability to friend somebody is a virtual ability. So the vast majority of the abilities that you get in information systems are virtual abilities. The ability to do something uh, to affect the state of information, not to affect the state of wor the world. So that's abilities. The main thing then with those virtual abilities is managing information. We're going to talk a lot more about the life cycle of information later, but what I want you to understand for the, for the, from the start here is that when I say that information systems allow you to manage information, what I mean is that they allow you to do everything from the initial creation of information through the eventual disposal of that information and everything in between. You can imagine, for example, on Facebook, when you create an account, that's creating information. There was no account for you before. Then as you go through time, you add more and more stuff, you add more and more content to that account, you're accumulating things, you're tagging people in photos, et cetera, et cetera, accumulating information, and then one day you decide, I don't like Facebook anymore, and you delete your account. That's what the Facebook system allows you to do. It allows you to manage all that information from its creation to its organization and storage to its use by other people, by you, and finally to its eventual retirement or um, deletion. So information systems um, give you abilities, and it's a little drippy around here. Let me wipe off my computer. Information systems give you abilities, and information systems mostly give you the ability to manage information. That's why we call them information systems. All right, so from the beginning, a big dream of computer scientists has been, a, has been to allow information systems to be leveraged. That means I write something once, I create something once, and I use it many times. Mostly that's happened, actually, in networks. We have now one big network. There used to be lots of different networks, and networks used to be created as they were needed. But now there's one big network, the Internet, that pretty much covers everything that I want to do in transferring information. So in networks, we've actually realized that dream of having things created once and used many times. In hardware, the dream is pretty much there as well. Differences between PCs and Macintoshes and Unix machines, for example, notwithstanding, um, hardware is pretty much hardware, and pretty much any, any system that I create can run on pretty much any hardware that, um, that is around, to a first approximation anyway. In software, however, it's not quite that, that, um, that good. We do have lots of reusable components. The system that I created from this class, I created from lots of reusable components. But unfortunately, I had to do a lot of coding as well. And in general, we have lots of leverage in computer code, lots and more and more leverage. 
But in order to create something useful and interesting, I almost always have to create a whole lot more computer code to go with the computer code that I use from other people. So that dream of being able to create code once and use it many times is still pretty much in the distance. Okay, um, in this course, we're going to focus on one particular kind of information system, and that's a web information system. And I'll cover that next.